before before I say before I say anything else, Ray. I am so sorry that West Virginia lost yeah. to Kansas. But at least they beat Kansas the other games this year, right? No. No, they didn't. Oh, never mind then. So I am sorry. Oh. So Ray, treat Ray gently today because he's going through mourning. Uh, and you too, oh Susie, sort of like bookends yeah. at the at the uh, at the extremes. I am I am so so sorry. Well, maybe next year. I mean, it could be worse. You could cheer for the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, no way. Well, again, welcome in the name of Christ. We've got announcements in the bulletin of which you may want to take note. We're gonna, we do our study dinner on Tuesday, which is a great deal of fun, and it's good food, and we all have fine table manners, and nobody's eating off of anybody else's plate, so it's, it's good. Plan on coming on Tuesday night, and we'll finish our study, that's finishing our series, on Tuesday. Um, let's see, uh, Linda, you said you have, you have, what, like 87 announcements to make? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Give them a round of applause. They have uh, collected 886 items of food for our food pantry, so they worked really hard. And also to our sessions meeting that was supposed to be for today, it will be Wednesday at 7 o'clock right after bell practice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, there's, there are a couple of other things that I want to mention. One, uh, if you want to, because I don't know about you, but I'm a little sleepy. I'm a little logy right now uh, because I could have slept uh, an hour more. If you want to find out how to deal with this spring forward and be alert and happy and full of energy, you want to talk to Sue Bolt uh, right here. She... She figured out how to do it. And, and I am not going to share with you this discovery that she made. Uh, go and ask her later. But it, she may be able to, to uh, copyright or patent it. And it is a, what's that? It worked. It worked, yes. And so you might want to keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. and, and one other thing. We are, we are going to have, oh, and Peggy, yeah. The Easter Bunny is going to come? Yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there. Um, one, and I'm glad you mentioned Palm. Did you have something? What's that? Monday Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, we're going to be doing soup. Yes, we're going to be doing Monday Thursday service. Uh, uh, the la it's the last Thursday in the month. I don't know the date. Uh, so we'll be meeting in the fellowship hall. We got a good Friday service. I'll share more about that next week, but thank you. Uh, also, and this is really exciting because we just set, made some plans, set some plans up like three days ago. On Easter, and it's a little blurb in your bulletin, on Easter we are going to have an incredibly special service. So what I want you to do is I want you to invite your friends, invite your enemies, invite everybody you know to come with you on for Easter morning because we're going to have remember the the group that sang at the Broadway uh, brunch they're going to be with us in the worship service so they're going to be an active participant in our service and we're going to shape the whole service around some of the music they're going to bring and so this would be the one not only to attend yourself but if you've wondered you know thought about well I'd like to ask somebody to come but geez Louise have asked them to come then they've got to listen to 
him. Um, so maybe not. If that's well on your mind, this is a great service to invite your friends, your relatives to come. It should be really, really special. Uh, any other announcements? Yes, Susan. We have a birthday this week. We have a birthday this week? Whose birthday? Who? Janice. Janice? Janice's birthday? Janice! Congratulations! Yeah! You certainly don't look it. Alright, let's, um, let, no, 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 no. No, no, that's right, that's what I was going to say. You shouldn't have to play for your birthday. Okay? So we are going to sing this uh, a cappella, which means we're going to give it a little calypso beat. No, that's not that's a little, little joke. Alright, let's sing. So we'll sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Janice. Happy birthday to you. And more. Very good. Brothers and sisters, as God's people, let's worship Him together. And to begin our worship, let's stand up and let's sing together hymn 475. The words will be up on the screen. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
Thank you much. Y'all may be seated. And we have a really a special treat this morning. Our bells will be performing. performing. So come on up front. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. That was that was outstanding. And and I don't know, but Sue, you seem to have a whole lot of energy. You know. Get that extra hours. Get that extra hour, you know. So <laughs> that was good. Sue, outstanding job. Uh, so we thank you. We come to the part of the service when we have the opportunity to lift our prayers to God. Now, we've got some particular needs that are on the insert there in your bulletin. You may want to take note of those. Are there any additions that we might want to remember? I know, John, sh sh what's going on with your dad? Hey, I just wanted to tell everybody, uh, first of all, thank you so much for your thoughts and prayers. And dad is doing remarkably well. So thank you so much. And he's awesome. Good. How's his, how's his sight? Uh, he still has some vision damage, but it's improving. Good. So, so he's, he's doing pretty well with that, too. He gets to wear a cool patch. So Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you can, you, when you dress like Jack Sparrow, yeah. he can go with you. That's good. <laughs> so that's, that's outstanding. Well, that's good to, that's very good to hear. Well, we, um, we want to make sure we, we lift up in prayer our sister, that, uh, uh, Kim Gear. Uh, when we pray, we've been praying for Bob uh, after a stroke, and he's doing well. But Kim Gear uh, isn't doing well. She had a massive stroke. Um, if, you don't, if you don't know this, her daughter, Caitlin, is getting married next month. Uh, she was supposed to have a shower today, but her mom had a stroke this last week and is 
uh, is down in Wheeling. So we want to remember the entire family uh, in, our, in our prayers. So, uh, are, there, are there other needs or concerns we might want to remember today and into the next week? Yes. Diana. Okay. So we want to pray for AJ and and the entire family. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else we need to, to keep in mind? Yeah, Joy. It's been a rough been a rough winter for a lot of folks. Flu's been all over the place. So uh, we want to continue to pray for her and, and all the elderly that are really struggling with these viruses and bacteria and, and such. Well with, these, well, with these in mind, let's go to God now in prayer. And what, what I'll do is I'll open, part of the prayer will be confession, because we're going to hear God's word in just a little bit. Then we're gonna, you're going to have the opportunity to lift your concerns to God, and then we'll close with the Lord's prayer. So let's go to God now in prayer. Lord God, we want to thank you for giving us this, this wonderful opportunity to, to meet in your name. We also thank you for the remarkable things you are doing in the lives of, of people. Your presence is there. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to witness it. So, so thank you, Lord. Now, in just a little bit, we're going to hear your word read and proclaimed. And this morning, we're going to be talking about repentance. And, and you know, repentance is, is a real challenge for most of us. Because repentance involves change. And change is nearly always difficult. Uh, we enjoy being who we are. We enjoy doing what we do. We enjoy the values that we have. And, and to suggest changing any of that, well, it makes us uncomfortable. Uh, even, even though we may down deep recognize that the change is for the, for the better, it still makes us uncomfortable. It, it still causes anxiety within us. It's, it's still something we resist. And yet that's what repentance is all about. And so when we hit those times, those situations where we really do need to make changes in our lives, we really need to straighten ourselves out. Uh, give us the strength and the, the fortitude and the courage to make the changes we need to make. And when we fail to do that, when we just kind of slip back into a state of complacency and comfort, uh, we ask for your forgiveness and, and your grace. And stick with us and help us wake up a little bit so we recognize the, what we are capable of doing. So help us to do that in the name of Jesus Christ. And now in the privacy of our own hearts, we're going to lift up to you the concerns that are on that insert. We're going to lift up to you the needs that we know so well in our lives. And we're going to lay before you those concerns shared this morning. Lord God, hear us as we pray. Thank you. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for forgiving us. And Lord God, thank you for responding to our needs. And we know that we've been forgiven because we've confessed our sins in faith. We also know that you will respond because we've lifted these needs up in the name of Christ our Savior, who taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you all come on up to collect our offering? Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you again for giving us a chance to be together this morning to celebrate your presence. Guide and direct the leaders of this congregation that these are gifts may be put to good and effective use. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. You all may be seated. Well, we are now dead center in the middle of our sermon series, preparing for Easter. 
And at this point, we've already talked about two things that we might consider doing as we get ourselves ready to uh, remember the crucifixion and celebrate the resurrection. For example, in the first week, we talked about fasting. And you remember what fasting was all about? What's, what's fasting? Yeah, something you don't want everybody to know that you're doing. It's we, yes, when you sacrifice something, uh, and it's best if you do it for someone else. You, know, you may sacrifice eating, but something else, and you're not supposed to let other people know that that's what you're doing. Now, we talked about that in the first week. And then during last week's service, we focused on forgiveness and how we can forgive people that have have hurt us. And when we do that, not only do we free ourselves, we free the other person. It's because it's hard to, for us to carry the weight of anger and bitterness, and it really puts a strain on other folks. So we talk, we've already talked about that. And as we look forward to celebrating the cross and the, and the empty tomb, we're going to be dealing this morning with the third thing we might want to do to prepare ourselves, and it's something that the Bible calls repentance. But before I go, go on, before I go any further, I've got to tell you how glad I am to see all of y'all, some of you brighter than others, this morning. Now, to me, this shows a lot of dedication. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> because this is the one Sunday a year where it would be really easy to stay home. Really easy to stay home and to sleep another hour. And you know, you know why. And for that reason, it is my least favorite Sunday all year. I really dislike this Sunday. But it has nothing, of course, to do with the weather. It has nothing to do with the season. It certainly has nothing to do with the fact that the bells played. The bells were beautiful today. No, my... My dislike for today can be reduced to two very simple and very clear words. Does anybody know what those words are? They are spring ahead. Spring ahead. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now, early in the morning, and this is almost a miraculous thing, early in the morning as we move past 1.59 a.m., we actually lost an hour of our lives. Do you realize that? An hour disappeared because we moved from 1.59 to what? 3 o'clock. Which means we not only missed the opportunity to do something really life-changing, Something really exciting. If we're married, something that would be meaningful to our spouses between 2 a.m. and 2.59, that's gone. But we also lost 60 minutes of our, of our sleep time on Sunday morning. Of course, this is something that outside of the nine years I lived in Indiana, I've been doing my, my entire life. And no one needs, I don't want anybody to tell me that I'm going to get that hour back in October. Because I really don't care. Yeah, and that's way in October. Given the state of the world, we may not even be here in October. Right now, Right now, I throw that little bit of good news out. Right now, I am sleepier than I should be. Which means, i got to tell you, I am struggling to stay awake. And I'm the one preaching. I can't imagine how hard it is for y'all. Man, I'm looking at Amy back there. She's already got her head down. Now, this morning... 
When we were all asleep, our time changed and we're never going to be the same again. Well, that was a little bit too dramatic. But, but you get what, what I'm talking about. And you know what's interesting? This business about change, that's really what repentance is all about. Change. You see, the, the Greek word that we translate repent or repentance literally means to change one's mind or to adopt another view. That's what it means. And if one person comes to the conclusion that his or her earlier view was foolish or maybe evil, that person may feel some regret or remorse when the change is made. Now that's what the word means in Greek. And so during the rest of our time together, or until a majority of you all drift off, and one of you is really shaky right now, We'll talk about what repentance means for us as Christians, how we might do it, and why it's important. And I'll tell you the first question, well, I, it's pretty easy to answer. What is repentance? Because there are all kinds of passages in the Bible about what this repenting business is all about. And that's particularly true in the two books that the evangelist Luke wrote. And I'm talking about his gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. For example, this was the message of John the Baptist before Jesus even showed up on the scene. According to Luke, John went into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And he said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. And later, when the Pharisees and their scribes were complaining uh, to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You see, for Jesus, repentance was a major part of his, his preaching, a major part of his mission. And I'll tell you, it's also at the heart of the message offered by the early church. For instance, right at the beginning of the book of Acts. In fact, it is right, the, it's Peter's first sermon. He has just gone through Pentecost. He's inspired by the Holy Spirit. This is what happens. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Now understand, Peter is there in Jerusalem. Pentecost has just occurred. He's preaching to the crowd. They ask him this question. Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, your, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to it. Now that was at the beginning of Acts. And near the end, as Paul, now we're talking about Paul, is on trial and he's trying to explain it to his, his judges what he's been doing these all this time, you know, sh as he was sharing the gospel. He said... After that, King Agrippa, he's talking to the king, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, first to, uh, uh, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the, to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. You see, this focus on change, or I think you could say uh, conversion, because that's what uh, conversion is, is change, was right in the center of the Christian message. And that was the case right from the beginning. And I'll tell you, I think that is true for us as well. It's right in the center of the message we can claim. 
You see, just like it was for them, re repentance is still all about changing our perspectives and our actions and our attitudes. It's about change. In fact, in a real sense, it involves a, a, a turning. And I'm talking about both a turning from and a turning to. That's what repentance is. I mean, it's about turning from a lifestyle that I think you could describe as self-serving and self-indulgent. One that's obsessed, uh, uh, obsessed on what's in it for me. And that's constantly looking after number one. And that measures success by how many toys you have when you die. As a matter of fact, I think it's reflected in the attitude of two characters that Jesus gives right in the middle, right at the beginning of a parable he offers only in the Gospel of Luke. This is what he says as a parable he shared with, his, with the Pharisees. He said, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table, even the dogs would come and lick his sores. Yuck. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades where he was being tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Now I want you to note that nowhere, nowhere in this parable was the rich man called evil. Nowhere does Jesus suggest that he was wicked or ungodly. On the other hand, nowhere does he suggest that Lazarus was a good person, was, was righteous, was a, was a follower of God. That wasn't even mentioned in the story. Instead, the one who ends up in Hades was so focused on his fine duds and his gourmet meals that he never noticed the fella being licked by the dogs there by his stoop. You see, repentance is turning from an it's all about me attitude. While at the same time, it's also turning to a mindset that's self-giving and self-sacrificing. In other words, it's taking to heart what Jesus said to his disciples. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? You see, when we repent, we change, we, we turn from ourselves and we turn to God and to us. And that's what repentance is all about. And I'll tell you, there's only one way that kind of turning, that kind of conversion, that kind of change is going to happen. There's only one way. And that's by our deciding to actually do it. You see, repentance is up to us. We're the ones that choose to turn. We're the ones that decide to change. And you know, that's why the verb repent was so often used in the New Testament as a command. I mean, according to Matthew, in those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And according to the evangelist Mark, now after G John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. 
in Acts. Peter proclaimed in Jerusalem, there at Solomon's portico. He said, repent therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And later he said to Simon the magician there in Samaria, repent therefore of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible the intent of your heart may be forgiven. Now that's what they said. And I want you to think about it. They have only made this idea of repentance, this idea of change, of turning, they would have only made that a command if they really believed that people were able to change, to do. I mean, they weren't telling folks things they weren't able to do. They knew that human beings had the capacity to choose to make a change. Folks could decide to repent. And I'll tell you something, so can we. We can make that decision. We can make that decision to change. And I'll tell you, we can do it by making two decisions. And I'm talking about two decisions we don't just talk about, but two things that we actually do. You see, first, we need to decide that we are going to stop doing stuff that we know is wrong. We're going to have to stop doing stuff we know is wrong. Now I know we live in a world where it doesn't seem like anything is wrong anymore. You know, morality doesn't really matter. At best it's optional. It can't be for us. If we're going to change, we have to choose that we're going to stop doing stuff that we know in our heart of hearts is wrong. And I'm talking about stuff that is self-centered and self-indulgent. And I'll tell you, if we don't know what those things are, because maybe we lived under a rock somewhere, or we have bought into the world where morality no longer matters, I read an evangelist this last week. said morality doesn't matter anymore. Christian conservative, my gosh. Doesn't matter anymore. If we don't know what that means, we can turn to somebody like the Apostle Paul. Because Paul laid it out for us when he said, people's desires make them give in to immoral ways, filthy thoughts and shameful deeds. They worship idols, practice witchcraft, hate others, and are hard to get along with. People become jealous, angry, and selfish. They do not argue, and they, or they not only argue and cause trouble, but they are envious. They get drunk, carry on at wild parties, do other evil things as well. And I told you before, and I'm telling you again, no one who does these things will share in the blessings of God's kingdom. Man, the first thing we've got to do is stop with this kind of foolishness. Right? Sure. But second, we need to decide to start doing the kind of things that God has equipped us to do. It's not enough just to stop doing the bad. We need to start doing the good. And again, if this is a little cloudy for us, I want you to listen to Paul because he's clear. God's Spirit makes us loving. I'll tell you, let's, it's on the screen. Let's say these together because this is something I think is important for us all to know. God's Spirit makes us what? Loving, happy, peaceful, Patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled. There is no law against behaving in any of these ways. And because we belong to Christ Jesus, we have killed our selfish feelings and desires. God's Spirit has given us life so that we should follow the Spirit. But don't be conceited or make others jealous by claiming to be better than they are. I'm telling you, we need to decide to start, stop doing some of the stuff that we know is wrong and start doing something better. Now, that's how we repent. And the reason why this is necessary? Well, I think that's clear. 
You see, I believe only those who make the decision to change, only those who make the decision to turn, to decide that they're going to repent, they're the only ones who can do what God has commanded us all to do. And what's that? What has God commanded us all to do? Yeah, talk about love. It's not rocket science. According to Matthew, after Jesus had made the Sadducees look foolish, the Pharisees heard about it and got together. One of them was an expert in the Jewish law. So he tried to test Jesus by asking, Teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law? Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and most important commandment. The second most important commandment is like this, like this one. And it is, love others as much as you love yourself. All the law of Moses and the books of the prophets are based on these two commandments. You know, they say, and I, I assume you all have heard this, they say there is no I in team. There's no I in team. In other words, teams have to function together. Well, I'll tell you something else. There is no me in God. There's no me in God. And if me is the only thing that I can see, if everything is all about me, and if what I think and what I want and what I value is all that matters to... What? To whom? Me! I tell you, I'll tell you, I am so much in love with myself, there is no way I can love God. And if I believe the flow of the universe should be directed towards its center. And the center of the universe is, of course, me. How can I possibly love my neighbor as much as I love myself? I'm telling you, we're called to repent. Because it enables us to love God and to love one another. You see, that's why we do it. And that's why I think it's got to be part of our preparation for Easter. You see, I believe we have it in our power to turn. We have it in our power to turn from things that are self-serving and we have it in our power to turn to things that are self-sacrificing. And we can accomplish this by simply deciding that we are going to stop doing stuff that's wrong. But instead, we're going to live the kind of lives that please God. And finally, we can accept that repentance is important because it enables us to do what we've been called to do. Namely, to love God and to love neighbor. Now that's repentance. Something that will help us to both remember and to celebrate. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you. You've called us to repent. You've given us not only the opportunity, but the ability to repent. We have the ability to turn from trash to treasures. And we can do that by simply deciding to stop doing the things we know are wrong. And to start doing things that bring glory to you. And we know that when we do that, we'll be able to accomplish what you've called us to accomplish. To love God and to love neighbor. Now this, this we know thanks to your word. And we appreciate it. Now Lord, help us to do it. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Now before we close the service, I want to offer you all this opportunity. 
or this challenge. If there's anybody if there's anybody here who might feel the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and is interested in how he or she might, re might respond, talk to me after the service. If you've got a question about the service or the sermon, uh, please talk to me about that as well. Uh, let's close the service by singing a, a song that certainly has to do with what we've been talking about this morning. It'll be up on the screen. The title of the song is, I Repent. Please stay. Brothers and sisters, as we move towards the cross and the empty tomb, as we get ready to remember the crucifixion and celebrate the resurrection, let me challenge you to use some of this week to simply repent. To turn from and to turn to. To decide to claim the good and reject the bad. Because in doing that, you'll be able to love both God and one another. And to empower this walk, receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.